Hi, Mike Ken again. ITSE 1331 Beginning Visual Basic. I'm going to continue on in this series of videos about combo boxes and list boxes. This time I'm going to talk about a pretty simple example called List Box Selected Index. Let me get it launched right here. And in this example, I've got a list box that I just got from my toolbox. Just came over here and added a list box. I've got a label and a command button. Let me run the program and show you what it does. So we have a series of cars that we want to rent. Chevrolet is $29.95, Ford $31.50, a Yugo. Good luck finding one. It's still alive. Google it sometime. You'll see what I mean. Uh, Toyota, BMW, Lexus. I can say clear selection and up here it says NA because there's no cost. Let's look at the code for this. And what I want to do is double click on the list box. And that's going to be the event. Anytime something changes in the list box, that triggers selected index change. And all I'm doing in this case, in this sub, is doing a select case based on the value of the selected index. Remember, the selected index is either going to be a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, depending on which one's clicked on. The first item in a list box clicked on is selected index 0. If it's negative 1, nothing is selected. That's why I have case else. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is set a decimal variable to the cost of the rental, and these are just constants that I have uh, put at the top of my code. So if I scroll up here, you'll see my constants that I set up rather than hard coding the values here. And finally, the last thing I do in this sub is I take desk cost, turn it into a string, and put it into label cost. Now, one subtle detail that makes this program work is the fact that case 0 is the Chevy, case 1 is the Ford. So I have to get those selected indexes just right. If you look at my form load, I added the Chevy first. That means it's going to get selected index 0. I added the Ford second. It's going to get selected index 1. The Yugo is going to get 2. Toyota is going to get three. So if you look at my selected case, I'm getting the I'm getting the Toyota cost as case three. I have to make sure I match these up for this technique to work. I'm going to put a breakpoint right here in the gray column next to selected case, select case, and run the program so we can see what happens when I click on something. So the program's running. I'm going to click on Toyota. That's going to trigger my selected index change. And I can step through this using the debugger. Remember, if you go up to the debug menu, that step into is F11 and step 10 is F over. So I'm going to do a F10. And it jumps down because selected index has a value of 3. So it goes to case 3. I can keep using my debugger, F10. It's going to set the cost for the Toyota to $25.95, end select. It's going to put the value in the label so the user can see it. And now I'll just tell my program to continue, and you can see it's got the cost $29.95. This time I'll click on Chevy. That triggers my event. Right now selected index is 0. I'll F10. It sets the cost to the Chevy cost, which is $29.95 puts it in the label so the user can see it. I'll tell my program to continue. And so what I wanted you to see is how, why do we care about the selected index? Because the selected index tells us which item they clicked on. And in this case, I, I could have done this with a nested if, but I'd just be different. I used a select case. Finally, let's look at the clear selection button. All the clear selection button does is set the selected index for list cars to negative one. That's going to change the selected index in 
the list box, which is going to trigger this event. And then it's going to step through and get cost in A. So let me run the code. I'll hit F5 again. And this time I'll hit, you know, here's Toyota. I'll just tell it to continue. And then I'll say clear selection. And you see clear selection triggered, selected index changed. And as I step through this with the debugger, it jumps down to case else, sets the label to NA, and exits the sub because we don't want to try to put desk cost into that label. And I'll tell it to continue. So this is an example of how we can work with the selected index. It's a very simple program. And that is all you got to know for this one. Thanks a lot.